Good morning, everybody. Welcome behind the scenes here at Jamie Riddler Studios. I am JB and this is Shibumi. It is spring, the windows are open, and oh, the cats and me are happy. <laughs> I'm also happy to be here with you today. And I want to talk to you about something that I think is so important, something that's really been on my mind lately, lately which is developing creative resilience. And this was on my mind particularly because we just launched the studio yearbook, uh, the summer studio yearbook. You can come on over to open the door.ca and check it out. I hope you'll join me on this great adventure. We are starting our fourth year of this wonderful seasonal journal, a journal that has had such impact in the world that has supported people in their creative lives that have helped them awaken their creative spirit. And I'll tell you something, it would not have happened if I didn't have creative resilience. I could have very easily, after the first season, walked away. <laughs> because whenever you try something new, there is a whole bunch of hard wrapped up in there. And for me, it was, we had our first launch day and it was very exciting and sales were coming in and my heart was pounding and I was just so happy and then, all sorts of questions came out in about one particular thing. A whole bunch of people had anticipated that the studio yearbook would be for the year, not for the season. It's a seasonal guided journal. And there was quite a strong reaction from some people and my heart sunk. Yes. I probably like you am a highly sensitive creative and that made my emotions just go wild. And I had to find a way to not only come back from that, respond to that, but then also come back again and again and again, each season for three full years. And some of the strategies I, I use are the strategies I'm gonna share with you re right now. So I'm gonna share with you today three strategies, three, for building your creative resilience. And I share that story with you, that vulnerable story with you, to show you why it's so important. Because otherwise we could easily shut down and never do or share or be the creative that we're meant to be in the world. So this is a top skill for you to develop as a creative and especially if you would identify as a highly sensitive creative because our emotions, they can have a big impact on how we move through the world. So number one, is to build and strengthen your emotional and physical reservoirs. And if you've been around the studio for a while, you know I always quote The Tempest in saying, we are such stuff as dreams are made on. Our creativity, our projects, our offerings, they come out of this. They come out of our heart and soul. They come out of our gut. They come out of our creative well. And you'll know this already. How resilient are you when you're exhausted? How resilient are you when you're really hungry? It's not the greatest place to be coming from. So if we tend to our physical being so that we are strong, we are flexible, we are rested, we are fed, we are tended, then we have more to draw on and more resilience is available for us. This is also true of our emotional well-being. If somebody doesn't like what we do or criticizes of what we do, judges what we do, we can take it deeply personally. It can knock us down low. And so making sure that we are emotionally well tended, that we have strategies for taking care of our heart is important too. And also so that we don't get so reactive and um, really need people to love what we do. That can also get in the way of us creating our purest work right? Because if we really need people to love what we do, then we can create totally skewed towards what we anticipate other people wanting. Like, will you like me if I do this? Will you like me if I do that? Instead of like creating from our deepest heart, like this is the work that I'm meant to create and I can stand in it and I hope you love it. But if you don't, that's okay too. So creative resilience can in part be supported by this strategy of making sure your emotional and physical reservoirs are well tended and well taken care of. And so filling that up keeps, keeps us strong, keeps us in a 
greater sense of equilibrium and better able to respond with resilience to creative challenges. So that's number one. Number two is building your creative confidence muscle. <laughs> And we do that by creating, by creating more and more and more and more and more. And by having a creative practice, by regularly creating creative projects, one of the things we do is we, one, we get better at what we do. We hone our craft. And as we get better, as we see our progress, as we see our drawings start to improve, or we start to feel the strength in our voice when we sing, we that starts to grow our confidence, not just in this new state of being uh, more skilled or having all that skill, but also in our capacity to play with my pen. So, <laughs> but also in our capacity to develop as a creative. It's a way it reassures us that we are capable of growing in this manner, of becoming more and more of the artist that we want to be. So that's one of the reasons why creating helps us build our creative confidence. And the other way this works is that the more things we create, the less one particular thing has to hold the weight of proving that we are creatives. And we so often do that to our poor, tender creations, right? We, like, we create this little thing, we boop, 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 send it out in the world and say, okay, okay, little vulnerable thing, please prove to me, my partner, my family, the world, that I am worthy. Please convince me that it is okay for me to go on this path. Please go out there and show me that I will be a success. Too much pressure. Too much pressure. The more we create, the less pressure there is. The more we create, we see, hey, there are some things that we just fall in love with that we create. There are some things we learn from that we create. And we know by the sheer fact that we are creating, that we are creatives at heart. And so build that creative confidence by creating lots of creating often, creating from your heart and honing your skills. And then the last strategy that I want to share with you is to feel the feelings, learn and grow. So feel the feelings, learn and grow. So like in my story, when I got this feedback about the studio yearbook back at the beginning day, I was full of the feelings <laughs> and they were overwhelming. Again, the more you create, the more resilience you develop, it's like that that tough feeling section gets smaller and smaller and you can move on to the learn and grow section faster and faster. But at the beginning, something happens, you get judged, you made a mistake, uh, somebody criticizes you, whatever it is, you feel all these feelings and you think, I got to walk away from this. This is too painful. This is too uncomfortable. I'm not built for this. I must not be made for this because otherwise I wouldn't be going through this. I'm supposed to be following my bliss. This is not bliss. This is anything but bliss. It's not so. We have those feelings. It's very natural. It's a reaction to caring deeply. It is very normal when we create something from our heart and our soul and we put it out into the world and it gets anything negative back at all. We react. So what do you do? Well, what I do is I get up and move around. I try to get that feeling to move through my body. I don't deny it. I don't try to tough it out. I try to express it and expend it. I get up, walk around the room, pace, stretch, move, breathe, talk it out. I'll talk to myself. Yes, some swear words will probably come out too. Expending the energy, getting it out of my system. If I need to, I'll call my dear sister Shannon, who is an important part of the studio. I'll talk it out with her. I'll grab Justin and say, do you have a couple minutes for me to just because I need to get it out and do it right away. And once I do that, okay, now it's time to learn and grow. Now it's time to solve the problem. Now it's time to figure out if there really is a problem. Sometimes people just aren't going to like what you have to offer and that's okay. There's nothing to resolve there. You just say, oh, I'm sorry you didn't like it. Um, let's both move on. Uh, but sometimes, like in our, my instance, I thought, okay, a lot of people aren't getting the message that this is seasonal. What can I do about that? 
Go back to the sales page. Make sure I say it more often. Make sure I say it specifically. Make sure the dates of the beginning and end of the yearbook are very clear. Continue to share this message. Every time I talk to people, say, this is a seasonal guided journal. This is a seasonal guided journal. Explain the rationale behind why it's seasonal. You know, solve the problem, learn and grow. Feel the feelings, learn and grow. I like to think of this, a metaphor I I like to use for this um, that I picked up somewhere along the way is to think about it like you have built a boat. So you build the boat to your best of your ability. You build it with love and care and attention to detail. You try to make the most excellent boat that you could possibly make, just like we did with the yearbook. And then you put it out into the water and boop, 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 suddenly there's leaks. This doesn't mean you were careless. This doesn't mean you don't know what you're doing. This doesn't mean that you weren't meant to sail. It simply means that this is the next stage of the journey. This is when you test it in the water where you notice where the problems are so you can fix them, so you can learn and grow. And the more you do that, the more you'll build your creative confidence and the more you will build your creative resilience because you will know this is not the end. I can bounce back from this. I have done it before and I will do it again. This does not mean I am not meant for this. I am not choosing to have perfection be the proof that I am a creative meant to do creative work in the world. No, I, that is not the point. The point is that I have a creative heart and I am creating from it and I'm going to learn whatever I need to learn in order to share it with the world in order to be true to that part of my soul and my spirit. And part of that is developing my creative resilience. So I'm going to take care of my physical self. I'm going to take care of my emotional self. I am going to create and create and create. I'm going to grow my creative confidence. I'm going to create bigger creative muscles. I'm going to hone my skills. And when things go wrong, when I fail, when I make a mistake, when people criticize me, when they judge, I'm going to feel my feelings and then I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to grow and I'm going to show up again. I want you to really know this because I never want you to give up. I never want you to walk away. Even when it feels Walk away for the moment that it takes to release those feelings, to tend to yourself, to do what you need to do, to come back to the work that is so deeply meaningful to you. And I'll tell you something, walking away because, I mean, I've thought it a million times. Every time I ever acted in a show, every time, all I wanted to do on the day of the performance was to get on a train going the opposite direction. That's the image that was always in my, I just want to get on a train going in the opposite direction. I wanted to run away. When uh, that happened with the studio yearbook, I wanted to run away. I was like, I don't want to do this. This is too hard. This is too intense. I don't want to do this. Well, thank goodness I didn't give up because this yearbook has reached hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. It has brought um, sisters closer together. It has brought mothers and daughters closer together as they create together. It has reunited people with their creative spirit. It has reminded people of the beauty of their and magic of their lives. It has awoken new possibilities for people. So my creative resilience meant I could show up again and again and share this work so that people could show up again and again and do theirs. And here's a little sort of sad secret. (laughs) But even if you do walk away because you don't want to feel the emotional intensity, you don't want to face rejection, you don't want to face failure, you don't want to make mistakes and have people see them. Because that's one of the things that sucks about sharing stuff. It was one of the things I hated about being an actor. The only way to get better at it was to suck at it in front of other people. Ah, Like the worst thing ever. But if you walk away because you don't want to experience those things, the rotten thing is you experience them anyway. 
because we can't get through this life without failing. We can't get through this life without making mistakes. We can't get through this life without being judged or criticized by other people. So we might as well do it doing something we love. We might as well do it in the service of our soul's calling. We might as well do it for showing up to our creativity with authenticity and realness and sharing what is really deeply and truly wants to move through us and into the world. So develop your creative resilience so that you can create the work that is in your creative heart. I can see it now. I've got that spring feeling. I can see into the depths of your creative heart all those tender little shoots, those little sprouts that are just waiting to come to life that need you to tend them. So tend to your physical self, tend to your emotional self, grow your creative confidence, feel your feelings, learn and grow. It's kind of five steps that I tuck down into three. <laughs> I hope that inspires you uh, this week. And I also hope you'll join me for the summer adventure of the studio yearbook. Here's my um, spring yearbook. And just to give you a feeling of how it changes from a empty fill in the blank journal to something that is very alive and vibrant and reflective of your creative life. And it provides a beautiful structure. We have things that we do each week. We have things that we do each day. We have a practice now for the new moon. We make dream boards on the full moon. It is a bit of structure. And also it comes with a beautiful, supportive, encouraging community. And these days with what we're going through with this global pandemic, a little bit of creative structure and a loving creative community is just what we need. Lots for me today. <laughs> And uh, I hope it has inspired you. I'm so glad to be here with you. I'm so glad to be in the studio. I'm so glad to be sharing these things. I really deeply encourage you to make a commitment to your creativity. And as a part of that, learn to grow your creative resilience. You'll be glad. And the world that is waiting for your creativity, it'll be glad too. Have a great week. I'll see you next time.